great. No way. Okay. Welcome to Blind Man Outdoors. I'm Dave, and I've been exploring my whole life. From my hometown in the Blind Man River Valley to the jungles of South America. Four years ago, I left an old life behind to chase a passion full time. Now, I built Canada's Yucapac Camper and the Alberta Outdoor Adventure Expo, all while continuing to explore and experience the great outdoors. You see, I believe we're called to live free and be wild. And if you do too, then this is the place for you. I have been looking for a way, come on, focus on me. So I've been looking for a way to access alternating current power uh, while I'm out on the road exploring, hunting, fishing, camping, etc., for quite a while now. I know all the options that are out there. You can do DC to AC converters, run an inverter system. But one thing I realized, I needed it to be mobile, actually be able to use the power when and where I need it. But I wasn't sure how to go about it. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do specifically with, with, with like the process, um, what function, what system I wanted to use to accommodate that. Now, there are obviously plenty of options out there. Right, you can do the DC to AC converters with the inverters, run a whole bunch of line. I'm just gonna close that video. Sorry, Fowler. Uh, but you can do all, you can do all that stuff, really, and 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 they work, they work just fine. I didn't want to do that. Uh, a company by the name of All Powers reached out to us and said, Dave, we love the videos, we love the content. Would you be interested in doing a review on one of our products? If you're cool with that, I'm cool with that. Send me what you got, and I'm gonna take a look at it. And they did. Now straight up, there are obviously a ton of options for you to choose from when you're looking for portable power. Now the one we're gonna be looking at today is an all powers unit. It's a 300 watt unit that comes with a solar panel. So you can be completely mobile power anytime you want, no matter where you are, which is really, really important for people like us. All right, now a system like this isn't just good for things like charging your laptop, you know, charging your cell phones and your trinkets. Where the power system and the AC units really come in handy is where you, when you need to use power tools, when you need to charge something a little bit more powerful. Now the all power system that we have today that I'm gonna share with you guys is pretty cool. It's the 300 watt all powers system. This is a 299 watt all powers power bank. It comes with fast charging on top, so you can just lay your smart, uh, smart devices on top that are wireless charging compatible and charge right on top there. You get not one, but two 110 uh, volt plugs. You get your standard 12 volt cigarette plug right up there. You get a light as well, two fast charge USB-Cs and two USB-As at 18 watts. So the USB charges at, the USB-C charges at 100 watts and the USB-A charges at 18 watts. Now to turn it on, you just push and hold the power button and the system itself powers on with no issues. Right now we're running at 99%. We did just charge this thing. It comes with a wall charger and a solar panel as well. And then with our light, you kind of just turn the light on. Now I didn't think I would actually use this light that often, but sometimes what I found happens is that I'll run and grab this in the dark and realize that I've got my hands full and I don't have my headlamp on. So just being able to turn that flashlight on and kind of walk back to where you're going to is super handy. And it does come with three functions. You got a dimmable and you've also got a blinker light. I'm not sure what you would use that for, but it does look like it blinks SOS. Yes, it is. Yeah, so that's an SOS blink. So that's, I mean, I don't know why. I think if you're in an SOS situation, um, I, don't, I don't know if this is gonna be, I don't know if you could consider uh, this system as some sort of uh, survival kit system. However, what you could consider it though as is something really useful in a tiny home, an off-grid property, or more and more and more likely in a situation where it's a power down situation. Um, up here in Canada, we do get brutally cold winters. They are extremely rough on the power grid, so we do have power downs up here quite a bit. We also saw what happened with the forest fires up in the area in Jasper, all through California. We know what's happening with the hurricanes down south. Now where this system kind of falls a little short and you're gonna see it in more of the bigger models is the ability to run this thing as a power system. So just like you would normally plug into a 12 volt battery, um, this does not have the ability um, for you to plug it in and use it as a power source. 
I know Armor Light campers, they'll actually use systems like this as the power source for their campers, so it'll run everything inside their camper. Um, in order to get that, you kind of have to go to one of the bigger models, like the 1500 watt, the 1000 watt, 2500 watt. And that means that the price increases as well, and so does the size. So depending on where you wanna run this, how you wanna use it, it might not be the best for you. Something smaller, portable, where you can use that 110 when you need it, is probably a little bit more universally uh, usable, um, you know, just in the grand scheme of things. So Dave, that's all well and good, but what if I need to charge it while I'm out camping and I don't have the ability to actually do that? Um, all Powers does also do the folding solar panel system. So this is your pretty basic uh, folding solar panel. In the back there, you've got all your connections, a bunch of extra cables, and like really cool actually is this little system here. So if all you do is buy this solar panel, you can actually charge all your devices, like small devices at least, on the solar panel itself by plugging directly into it, or plug it directly into the all powers unit and get it charging like you would normally charging anything else through a solar panel, right? And it just unclips and opens up, and I believe this is the 200 watt solar panel. So you get one, two, three, four large photo cells, and it does fold up really easily and quickly. Right, and just like that, it's all plugged in, ready to go. It's a super handy unit. It's also covered in this really, really nice material. It's a pretty, uh, it's pretty rugged, pretty powerful. You can drop this and really not be too worried about it. And uh, I have also dropped the uh, power station more times than I would actually like to admit. And it still works perfectly fine. As you can see, we do have lots of scratches on it all over the place. So I, guys, I, I'm not gonna lie, I have been using this thing, if not every day for the past month and a half, um, pretty darn close to it. And I gotta say, for your best bang for your buck, Something like that's gonna be doing really, really well for you. To be honest, I have not actually tested this unit to run things like power tools or, you know, a power tool charger. So let's try that right now, like live, because why the heck not? So first thing we're gonna do is, you might not be carrying around like corded power tools anymore. A lot of us are using cordless power tools, um, but we are carrying around chargers. And if you're on a job site or you're building an off-grid cabin or something like that, Something like this would be super helpful. So let's plug it in and see if we can actually charge a 12 volt DeWalt battery on its charger. And then we're just gonna turn the AC on. All right, nothing yet. There you go. That is in fact charging guys. So there you go, we've got our DeWalt battery charging right here. 12 volt, 20 volt, doesn't matter. This thing is gonna charge your power tools for you. But that's really not that impressive. What really would be impressive is if it's able to char, if it's able to run a full on five and a half inch, is that a five? No, that's a four. Four and a half inch DeWalt angle grinder. Now guys, we are asking a lot from this little system here. So if this actually works, this will be super impressive. And it is a grounded plug. Ready? All right, so power's on. No way! Okay. Okay. Hold up. Let's, let's, let's put that under load. We've got some round square tubing here. Let's say we were out in the bush and we needed to do some grinding. This is not gonna power a welder, but it seems to be powering the grinder just fine. Okay, all right, okay, so, 
All right, can you just, can we just, let's be honest, that's, for, for a 300 watt power station, that's, that's nuts. I don't think we're gonna get a ton of work out of it. Um, just that brief use of the charger and the grinder has brought us from a 99% down to 94%. Not a big drop. But I'd be willing to bet we could get a full hour, maybe an hour and a half out of work. Consistent work from something like a, <laughs> something like a DeWalt grinder. I have one other idea though. I don't think this is gonna work. Okay, this chop saw draws a lot of power. And I am sweating, and I guess I could just take my puffy off, but I had the door open in my shop for a while here, and uh, that darn cat just keeps peeing on everything. Anybody want a cat? I have one for free. I'm more of a dog person, okay? I honestly don't think this is gonna work. I really don't. Uh, what we got here is a 1 8 chunk of aluminum. And uh, we're gonna remove those. We put these on. Make sure we're on. We're still sitting at 94% power. This is gonna be super crazy if this works. No. Nope. Right, do you hear that? All right, so what do we got going on here? If you look down there, we're getting an error two code. I'm curious if it'll, if we repower it, I mean, it's not gonna run the saw, right? But if we repower it, okay, turn it off and on, right? Hit that again. Yeah, see, it won't even, there you go. There you go. So it will not run something like a saw, like a, like a, like a heavy duty chop saw. All right, so it's not gonna run a chop saw, all right? So the 300 is definitely not gonna be strong enough to run something like that. So whether you're gonna use it for like, you know, a power station at work, um, don't expect it to run a chop saw. All powers, 300 versus a skill saw from 1995. I think this will work. I think it'll work. No. Okay, so is it just not working or is it not resetting? So let's reset. You know what, we might actually have to go in here and hit that circuit breaker. Power it back up. Now we're still sitting at 94%, so all of this testing hasn't drawn anything down whatsoever. Ready? Okay. Okay, all right. And remember, that just because it can power them, doesn't mean you're gonna get a lot of life out of that tool. I mean, just in running that saw, we went down another 2% and we didn't even cut anything. And I'd be willing to bet that the biggest board we could probably cut using the 300 series is probably a two by four, and I don't know how many we would get. So if you're looking to run power tools or something like that, I would go to a 1500 watt minimum. Um, thousand, no, I would say a thousand watt minimum, but a 300 will do in a pinch. If you're really up to up the creek without a paddle and you need power, you need to grind something, you need to cut something, um, this will do it, it'll do it. Um, but you'll need to charge it often. So it's just gonna make your work a lot longer. Whatever project you're building, whatever you're doing to build your cabin or anything like that is gonna take a lot longer. But for auxiliary power, for power, in addition to something that you already run, for example, in the Yucapac camper, we've got 100 amp hours of 12 volt power always. And when we pull the fridge out in the winter like we've done already, because it's fall, all that power in there gets stored in there for the diesel heater, for the electronics, the lighting, all like that. So for what we do, this is plenty, absolutely plenty. And honestly, I'm super impressed with it. So all in all, guys, the thing to take away from this video 
is that if you're looking for an all powers or a portable 110 volt system that will allow you to have access to standard household power in any sort of situation, whether it be an off grid or power down or some sort of emergency situation, there are available options for you that aren't gonna break the bank and that are resilient. I think you can pick these up now for under, with the solar panel, for about under 500 bucks on sale, or you can just get the, you can just get the power station or just get the solar panel. But in an event that we don't control and in a world where anything can happen, um, having a system like this is something that I would really recommend anybody get. It's not gonna run your fridge, but it is gonna run some power tools and some basic stuff. If you really wanna be prepared and go for something even more powerful, I would highly recommend picking something up at around 1,000 watt, 1,500 watts. Who knows, if we're lucky, maybe All Powers will actually see this video and send us like a 2,500 watt system so that we can actually test it with some of the more robust stuff that we might actually use. Heck, maybe we'll take the, the you know, some powerful stuff out in the bush and build a bush camp this winter. One thing I do wanna do this winter is get out a lot more uh, and maybe do some fishing and hunting. Um, I mean, we're also, we're obviously gonna do some fishing and this is really gonna come in handy uh, when we do some ice fishing. Something like this in the ice hut or the ice shack while we're fishing would just be the bee's knees. I think it could power probably our downhole scope and a whole bunch more um, in the ice shack uh, and, and, and really, you know, really make it a really cool way to camp uh, and throughout the winter. Now, lithium batteries don't like the cold. Everybody knows that. Um, after a certain amount of temperature drop, they actually won't take a charge anymore. They should still discharge, but if you're trying to charge something else, like if you were to plug that thing into a phone and your phone's too cold, you'll notice you'll never charge a phone. I've left my phone plugged into my Yuka pack um, for hours in the winter, just sitting on the tailgate while I'm winter camping and come back and it's only at 10%. So um, they, nothing will take a charge, but it should discharge no problem as long as you can get that ambient temperature up. Um, so try and keep it warm. Uh, things to note about this that I really like, I love that it's light. Um, that means that when you drop it and you will drop these things, uh, you're not gonna crack the case or anything like that immediately. You're gonna have to drop this thing from a, a significant height to, to do any damage. I mean, we could probably even just test that out right now and just do that and, uh, and grab it. And let's just, let's just see here. So we did. The casing on top here kind of cracked open a little bit. We've got some more marks right down there. And I mean, that's probably from a four foot height. Like that's a, that's a pretty good drop. But as you can see, it's just got these little clips. So I think if we just did one of these. No, give me a minute. <laughs> I think we can get this. I think we can get this. It's going to be dark. For you guys for just a minute but a little bit light you can kind of see that's what's happened when we dropped it from a four foot drop i'd say that's actually pretty darn good um, but what i want to try to do is get these little clips so you've got these you've got these small clips you can kind of see where the light's hitting it there so that's a little clip and it's supposed to clip in and under and hook this lip here okay we got one in another in and another there you go it's almost like you don't even know anything happened now the real thing is to see if we've damaged that smart charger so let's just make sure that we're turned on let's turn on our USB-C kind of see the wireless charging output sign right there we're just gonna set it right on top and make sure it's still oh that was fast so there you go guys there you go that is the All Powers 299 watt hour battery system uh, and a 600 watt output. And if you guys want the technical details for this thing, I'll put them in a PDF down in the uh, down in the, in the video description there. You guys can check it out for yourself and see if it'll actually work for you. Also, head over to allpowers.com and check out some of the other stuff that they got. Honestly, guys, I'm gonna recommend this one. I'm gonna recommend All Powers as a brand um, to compete with even some of the big guys because that thing has been used and abused 
so many times and there's not a thing wrong with it. The only thing that thing hasn't suffered is it hasn't gotten wet. But I've left it outside in the deep frost. I've left it sitting and charging way longer than I was supposed to. Um, the only criticism that I can give this thing is that when you're running the AC power, like when you're converting from DC to AC, it draws the power down very quickly. Um, at least on a 300, I get maybe three to four hours of Starlink consistent power um, before I need a charge. All right, so my final thoughts. Uh, the All Powers brand is a quality brand. It's something you can trust. More importantly, if you crack it, dent it, scratch it, or break it, it's not gonna hurt you as much as if you spent a high dollar amount uh, on your power system. For what you're paying, it's a very robust, solid unit. You can drop it off the side of your tailgate. You can tip it off the side of a, a table. And it'll work. Just fine. Now, I would recommend you do that a lot, but I mean, we've dropped it from three to four feet of height in this video at least three or four times already, and everything still works. It'll power a vacuum, a grinder, a skill saw, probably a reciprocating saw. It'll charge your batteries for your power tools, um, and it's gonna do all of this out of a very small package. This is the smallest unit that they offer, and to be frank, I would say that it's probably the best bang for your buck if you're looking at a portable power station that gives you the opportunity to have portable 110 power, household 110 power. For anything bigger, I recommend a bigger unit. Um, a 1500 to 2500 watt panel will do literally everything for you. Um, including probably even run a home fridge for some time if, if it's that kind of uh, system that you're looking for. All in all guys, I gotta say I'm very impressed with the unit. I've used it now for about two months and I gotta say I, I really hope that um, the brand continues to make products as good as this is um, and as long as they do I'll be here to point you guys in the direction of uh, a high quality, low cost uh, power system that really does everything you need it to do plus some. All right guys, well that's gonna do it here for this video. I really wanna thank you guys for hanging out and just listening to me talk about gear and tech and things that I actually like. If you guys wanna know more about All Powers, I'll put all this stuff in the description below. If you wanna follow us or like and subscribe and anything like that, we do encourage you guys to do so. It's the best way to help small content creators like us grow. We've been in the YouTube game now for going into about six years now. So if you found us finally, welcome. Uh, we hope that you guys stay. There you have it guys. As always, remember, live free, be wild, and we will see you guys in the next one.